Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Today I want us to discuss about the first chapter in biology form 4, genetics. But before I start my lecture, I want to thank the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us to reach this far. It is worth his blessing that he bestowed upon us that we reached this far. After uh, glorification of our creator, or rather the supreme deity, today I want us to navigate and dive into this chapter, Genetics, Biology Form 4, Chapter 1. Now, let's look what the term genetics mean. Now, when defining genetics basically mean it is the study of inheritance and variation. It is the study of uh, inheritance and variation you can as well define genetics as the study of passing on of characteristics from parents to offspring how you know for a characteristic to be passed on there must be two persons that is the female counterpart and the male counterpart and what we know is that these two different people, they possess, they possess different characteristics and in the event of fertilization, or rather the fusion of the different nuclei from the male and the female, that is during the fusion of gametes, we have the sperm from the male and the, male and the ovum from the female, each uh, have the nucleus is carrying some genetic materials. And there is an exchange that takes place. And due to that exchange, there is variation. There is what? variation now we can as well say that genetics it is the study of inheritance and variation as well we can say genetics is the study of passing on of characteristics from parents to offsprings now in this one now we go to terms commonly used in genetics terms commonly used commonly used in genetics The first term that is commonly used in genetics is called the gene. The gene, it is the basic unit of inheritance. It is the basic unit of inheritance. Determining characteristics. e.g. height and blood group. It is the basic unit of inheritance determining characteristics, e.g. the height and the blood group. Again, we have another term which is somehow related to this, it's called the allele. Allele is basically it is an alternative form of the same gene. It is an alternative form, alternative form of the same gene. Of the same gene, each determining, each determining, each determining contrasting, contrasting characteristic, contrasting characteristics. E.g. There is allele, allele for tallness, written as capital T, and an allele for shortness, given the letter T. What does this mean? This basically means that the gene is now the best. It will tell us the character, that is the height, for instance. But an allele it is an alternative form of the same gene, each determining contrasting characteristics, e.g. For, for a characteristic like height, we have individuals who are tall and individuals who are short. Therefore, that di the difference or that contrasting characteristics in a, in a particular gene is what we call the Ali. Very good. Let's go to the next locus. Locus, basically, these genes and this allele, they must be having a position in the chromosomes. 
Because these things, they are not found in the air. They are found in the chromosomes. Now, the location where this gene and this allele are found is what we refer to as the gene lo the locus. It is the location of a gene or an allele on a chromosome. On a chromosome. Basically, this is where the, the genes and the alleles are located on the chromosomes. Very good. Next one, we have something called dominant gene. We have the dominant gene. Dominant gene. This is the, this, it is the, it is an allele that influences the phenotype of the organism, the phenotype of the organism in the presence, in the presence of the alternative gene, of the alternative, of the altern in the presence of the alternative, in the presence of the alternative allele. What does that mean in class? For instance, you may have seen that the gene for tallness is T and the gene for shortness is T. In a scenario where we have like this, we have T, T. In such a scenario, the one that will express phenotypically or the one that will show the outward expression or rather the external expression is the tallness. This individual possessing such uh, such a, such a uh, gene, such a dominant gene, is going to be tall. Why? Because why can't we have a short person? No. But this gene, tall, is dominant over the other one, which is gene. Therefore, it will be present in the genotype. But in the phenotype, this tallness, this shortness will not be expressed. The external expression will not be there. But in the genotype, the, the gene for shortness do exist. But in the, in the phenotype, the gene for tallness expresses, and therefore, the individual will be tall, despite him possessing the genotype, or rather the allele for shortness. Now, let me, let me emphasize on it, because most of the learners don't get it clearly. As you can see, this one is the genotype of the organism. Now, this organism, when we are giving the phenotypic description, we say that this organism is tall. Our why? And again, what we know is that we have a, an allele for tallness as well as an allele for shortness. But phenotypically, this organism will be tall. Why? Because this gene is dominant over this allele. This allele is dominant over this allele, and therefore the, the allele for tallness will express itself phenotypically in the presence of this allele. Recessive gene. We also have another gene called the recessive gene. What's the recessive gene? It is an allele. It is an allele that can express itself in the presence of an identical allele, of an identical allele. E.g., let's look at this one. Very good. Now, this organism, again, we're going to say, we're going to see that this organism which is having such genotype will be short. Why? Because this one is the genotype for shortness, and also this one is the genotype for shortness as well. But you're going to realize that these genotypes, they, or this allele for shortness, can only express itself in recessive form. And in recessive form is both the two alleles, both the two alleles 
are identical are identical what does identical mean they are similar they are similar in that for the, this a little tall sh for shortness which is designated as a short t also another allele t which is also designated as a short t, uh, uh, a small t now we have a genotype of small t therefore this is called a recessive gene and this gene can express itself and therefore the phenotype of an organism which possess such a genotype will be expressed as a short why because both the genes which the th for shortness are identical very good now let's look at this homozygous 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 what is homozygous a condition where it is a condition where it is a condition where allele are alleles at uh, alleles at a given locus at a given locus are more are identical eg eg tt tt you have tt like that in each and every locus we can either have the allele for tallness as identical or the allele for shortness as identical now in such a condition we call it homozygous condition we also have another condition called the heterozygous condition let's look at what heterozygous condition means heterozygous heterozygous this is a condition where this it's also it is a condition where it is a condition where alleles at a given locus at a given locus are not identical are not identical eg tt tt now class what okay, you are seeing that it is an heterozygous condition why because both the allele this allele for tallness and this is an allele for shortness both the alleles are not identical when we say identical it basically means they are different let's look on let's go on you have something called genotype genotype another terminology used genotype what is genotype again it is the genetic makeup it is the genetic makeup of an organism this is the genetic makeup of an organism that is called the genotype for instance the genotype can be the genotype can be tt these are now collectively these are two alleles but this is an allele and this is an allele now the two alleles collectively they form the genotype of the organism good we also have the phenotype 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 it is the external expression it is the external expression of a gene of a, of a genotype what sometimes referred to as the phenotype for example eg there is a phenotype called tallness you have phenotype for phenotype for tallness you have shortness those now the external expression yeah phenotype basically means what we see on real ground but genotype things that we cannot see but we can use to determine them but the, the phenotype is the external expression of the genotype for instance this is a gene for tallness we're going to see tallness or a gene like this is the genotype for shortness we're going to see that organism is short as well let's look good have f1 generation f1 generation 
In full, it is called filial one generation. Filial one, filial one generation. It is a product formed, it is a product formed, it is a product formed eh? by crossing. Uh, genotypes two different identical two different identical genotypes identical genotypes two different identical genotypes what do I mean by that for instance you cross genotype for tallness which is identical as that you you cross with it with the, the, geno, the genotype for shortness which is TT. When you cross these two, you also get another generation. It's called the F2 generation. F2 generation. F2, F2 generation. F2 generation, it is a product formed by crossing F1 generation. It is a product form. It is a product formed. Product formed by crossing F1 generations. Now, in our next class, we will be looking at the following. Because uh, in the interest of time, I want us to be very brief so that the lessons can be uh, 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 attractive because if we be be make the lesson very long, it tends to become bored. So I would like to cut down my lectures in form where students can understand better. As well, I would like to also do a, a systemic upload of these things until we finish. But the next video is subject to the turn up of my learners to these lessons, the first lesson. Because the turn up to the first lesson will dictate on whether there will be continuation or there will be a termination. Because if the students show a turn up, a good turn up, and they show some interest through comments, now asking for ways to, many, uh, to do things better, or the topics which they have interest, they want us to cover, we will do much. But if you see there is no interest in the learners, and there is no worry also us, we can also relax. But in our next lesson, we will be looking at the following. Hybrid. We will also be looking at Test cross. We'll also be looking at back cross. From there, we're going to something called variations. And from there, we're going to see the uh, related things. How, what are the crossing, the genotypes, the punnett square, and the other one which we use to do calculation. But not just to lose hope, this is just but an introduction to the form for syllabus and we wish to continue in the incoming, upcoming lessons. I will wish to wish you the very best and always be obedient to your almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is because of his power, mercy that sustain us to this uh, universe. Thank you very much.